Good afternoon. Welcome to January's Beginner's Fly Tying Session. Today we're going to be tying midges. And so let me give you a short introduction about midges. Now midges are a small insect that are in the same biological order as the common house fly. However, midges differ in some respects um, to other flies. First of all, they are non-biting flies, and they are relatively small in size. And as compared to terrestrial or land-dwelling uh, insects such as the house fly, midges are aquatic in, their, in terms of their origin, their maturation, and uh, where, where you f would find them. So these small um, midges can be found uh, very commonly on streams, rivers, ponds, and lakes, particularly in, in our area and throughout the United States. Now, why would I have chosen midges for the flies for this January session? Well, because they're one of the only types of insects that are going to be present on some of these bodies of water. Uh, midges, basically reproduce year-round and so they are very prevalent particularly in the winter and one of the only sources of food for the fish. Now the two fly patterns that I've chosen for this session are the buzz ball which was developed by Gary LaFontaine some years ago and the buzz ball represents a cluster of midges as one would find floating on the surface of the stream and so the fish will gorge themselves with these adult flies that are clustered together uh, because there's a lot of energy in a cluster as compared to a single midge. The second fly that, I'm, that we'll be tying is the zebra midge, which represents an individual fly as it is emerging to the surface of the water um, to become an, an adult and, and fly away. So the zebra midge is uh, one of the most highly recommended types of uh, uh, midge imitations, and it can be tied in a variety of colors. Uh, we will be tying it in black today uh, because that is one of the most prevalent colors that m midges occur in. But, but you can find midges in reds and, uh, and olive and, and browns and a couple others. Uh, if you were to uh, really get into investigating these midges. So uh, in a few minutes, once we get set up here, uh, we will proceed with the tying of both the buzz ball and the zebra midge. And I hope you enjoy it. The first fly that we're going to tie is going to be Gary LaFontaine's buzz ball. So I have already put a hook into the vise and so I'll be starting my thread uh, just behind the eye of the hook, as we normally would, wrapping back to the bend of the hook. And then clipping off that excess thread. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to be tying in <clears throat> a piece of, of grizzly neck hackle. As you can see, it's, a, it's your traditional grizzly. It's your dark and light um, striated feather. So before I do that, I'm going to trim a small amount of the fibers off of each side of the base of this hackle, more so on the upper side. I don't know whether you could see that on, on the camera or not, but then I'm going to be placing this on to the, the um, top of the shank of the hook. And as we um, commonly do, we tie in the last feather or last uh, component uh, uh, first anytime that we're tying in materials at the bend of the hook and then planning to move them forward. So and I'm going to basically, before I do anything more, I'm going to sort of break the back of that hackle to make it a little bit easier to wrap 
when the time comes. So leaving that hackle fiber in place, the next thing I will do is take a section of uh, a feather from a grizzly dyed orange hackle. And as I did before, I'll trim some of the fibers off of the base of that. before tying it in on top <clears throat> of the other hackle. So I hope that you can see as I'm doing this step by step that we're basically uh, building up the abdomen of, of what will be this fly. And so the last piece that's going to be put in place is going to be this um, <clears throat> gray done uh, hackle fiber also from the neck of a hack of a uh, rooster trim the base of that and i lay this on top of the last hackle that i put in which would have been the uh, grizzly dyed orange and then holding that in, all in place make a number of thread wraps forward until I get up to the eye of the hook. I use my <coughs> half inch tool to put one half inch in there to secure that in place and then I'm going to pull my thread out of the way with my bobbin holder and then I grasp the two last fibers that I tied in and that would be the orange dyed grizzly and the gray dun and I lay them on top of one another and grasp both of them with my hackle pliers and then proceed to wrap these um, these feathers forward. So notice that um, I'm using the rotary feature of my vise to do this, but as you'll, as you'll soon see, it's just as easy to do it by hand. Um, if, if I were to have just a stationary vise. Also notice that I'm keeping the feathers perpendicular to the shank of the hook, which is going to keep the fibers from getting trapped underneath um, the uh, opposing uh, feather as it's being turned. Now once I get up to just about to the head of the fly, I'm going to catch those two hackle feathers with my tying thread, make two wraps behind those two, and then two wraps in front. Put in a one half hitch to hold everything in place. And I trim off the Again, I'll pull the thread out of the way with my bobbin holder. Take my scissors and clip off these fibers, these feathers. And now before I go ahead to bring the uh, grizzly hackle forward, I wanted to uh, trim the abdomen of this fly in such a way that the uh, two first two hackles do not stick out beyond the bend of the hook. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to clip off the uh, bottom and then I'll trim the top. And then the two sides. So this now is going to constitute sort of an underbody 
that's just going to give the fly not only buoyancy on on the surface of the water but it's also going to give the try the, the color that we're trying to achieve and that's sort of as Gary LaFontaine says in his book where he describes how to tie this fly um, he's talking about it giving just the hue of a cluster of of midges that are on the surface of the water um, at the particular time of the year that he was fishing it which was between winter and spring so so I've trimmed that off and now I hope that you can see that the body of the fly is now sort of a spiky cylinder. So now that that's done, I will again take my hackle pliers and grasp the grizzly hackle, which is still sticking to the rear of the fly. And I'll begin to make wraps of, with this hackle around <coughs> the entire abdomen of the fly. And the purpose of this last hackle is to basically provide more buoyancy to this, keeping it suspended on the surface of the water as it would be if it were a cluster of mid midges uh, grouped together, floating along uh, with the current. Just a few more wraps. And then I'll demonstrate how to finish off this fly <clears throat> with just a bit of trimming of the top and the bottom of the fly with my scissors. Okay, now that I have the um, grizzly dyed or the grizzly hackle uh, tied forward, I'm going to again secure that with two thread wraps behind the hackle and two in front. I can trim this off then. And using my whip finisher, first of all, I want to trim a few of these strays off. <clears throat> then I'll use my whip finisher to finish off the head of this fly. Okay. Cut the thread. And just trim a few of these stray hairs. Now, we want this fly to, to lay flat on the surface. And if we don't trim the grizzly on the bottom, it will make the fly turn over on its side. So we're going to tie, uh, we're going to trim this off level with the bottom and level on the top so that the only fibers that are sticking out are the ones that are on the um, on the two sides i think i also will take a little bit off of this tail here because this fly doesn't really have a single tail after all it represents a cluster of midges Yes, a few more, little bit more trimming to be done there. And then if we wanted to add a little bit of head cement, uh, we could do that at this point, just a little drop on there. And it's got everything held in place. So I hope that you've uh, enjoyed this first part, which is uh, the per first segment on tying the buzz ball. The next fly that we'll be tying today will be that of the zebra midge. Now I've already put into my vise a size 14 hook uh, this particular one is a, a 7051, um, referred to as a shrimp and caddis pupa hook. And I have put a bead on that uh, hook, and that bead 
is a 764 uh, silver bead and this particular size will accommodate a uh, nymph from size 12 through 16 hook. So I have the, the hook in the vise already and the bead is on the hook. And so the only other component other than thread is going to be some silver wire. And I will show you how to uh, tie in that silver wire very shortly. But for this particular pattern, I'm using, it's called brassy wire silver and the approximate diameter is 0 0.008. So let's start this fly. The first thing I'm going to do is tie in my thread just behind the bead and wrap it to the rear several turns. And I'll clip off that excess thread then I'll take that piece of wire that I showed you just a minute ago, insert it underneath the bead, it could be on my side of the hook, and begin to make thread wraps forward initially to anchor that piece of wire in place, and then to the rear, all the way around the bend of the hook. Now, Notice that I'm pausing at this point, which is about halfway around the bend of the hook, and I'm twirling my thread to give it a chance to unwind. Most all of the tying threads are basically twisted threads consisting of a number of small fibers. And by the way, this is a, uh, uh, would be considered either eight aught or uh, 70 denier. So now that I've made several twists there to unwind that thread, I'll begin to make additional thread wraps back around the bend of the hook. And perhaps you can't see it on the camera, but this thread now it has a flattened appearance, which is going to give a more slender um, look to the fly as we get back around the bend of the hook. So I've gone about one half the way around uh, the bend. As you can see, the silver wire is still protruding from the rear of the hook. And now I'll make just one or two more and begin to bring my thread forward. Now, I've made those very sparse, but as I get towards um, the, the uh, bead head, um, I'm going to begin to build up body and I'll go back and forth a number of times. Each time that I go forward, I go all the way to the bead, but each time I go backwards, I don't go quite as far. Now begin to come forward again. And then to the rear again. This time stopping about midway and then forward again. So I hope that you can see what I'm trying to achieve and that is I'm building up a heavier abdomen at the closer I get to the bead head. So I'll come back a little bit that way and then some more wraps forward. So this fly is now beginning to have a taper again, which is very thin at the bend of the hook and heavy towards the eye. Okay, well, that looks pretty good. Now, I'm going to put one half hitch in just to hold this thread in place. and then set the thread out of the, out of the way on the thread bobbin holder. And now I'll we'll begin to make wraps around the shank of the hook with this wire. And probably the easiest way to do this is to hold the wire in a pair of needle nose pliers and then begin to make wraps 
in the same direction that you laid down the thread around the shank of the hook, which is going to give a segmentation to the, the fly as it would appear in natural form. And of course, most all of the aquatic insects have some degree of segmentation in their bodies, particularly in the abdomen. Now, as I mentioned in a previous video, if you do not have a rotary vise, you can do this by hand. Uh, in other words, keeping the vise stationary and wrapping the wire around. So I just wanted to illustrate that you can do this both ways. Of course, having a, a rotary vise is a nice feature. Um, I've used this vise for a number of years. It's a Renzetti, it's one of the earlier models, and it truly is a workhorse vise. It's also uh, referred to as a traveler vise because it can be very easily carried with you if you want to take your vise with you when you're fly fishing. Okay, now that I have that wire up to the point where I want to secure it in place, I'm going to shorten my thread. and make a number of wraps around at the bead, just where the wire butts up against the bead, a few wraps behind the wire, a few wraps in front of the wire, and then we can either spiral this off or snip it off with snips. All right, we're just about finished now. I'm gonna make a number of more wraps just to not only cover up that loose uh, wire tip, but also to give a nice symmetry so that the abdomen of this fly just merges right into the bead itself. And a bead, of course, representing an air bubble that's on the nymph, which is helping it to rise to the surface. Now that I've made those wraps, I'm going to use a couple half hitches and uh, with my whip finisher. And pretty soon I have a finished fly. Now, as I did in the previous video, it's always good to apply a little bit of head cement to keep everything in place. If I were using my epoxy cement, of course, I would put a drop of epoxy on there and then hit it with the UV light. But in this case, I'm just going to use some of uh, this uh, uh, cyanoacrylate uh, or Zapagap type head cement. And a little drop of that. <clears throat> and we have completed tying a zebra midge. Now these zebra midges can be done in a number of colors. The black with silver, black with copper uh, segmentation is one of the, the standards. But you can also tie this in um, other colors, uh, perhaps uh, uh, olive, brown, cinnamon, something like that, uh, representing the different colors of midges that are hatching in the winter time, depending upon uh, what body of water you're fishing on. So there you have a completed zebra, mi zebra midge, and I hope you enjoyed uh, these instructions and that you can use them. Well, I hope that you've enjoyed today's tying session. Uh, which we tied, first of all, the buzz ball and then the uh, zebra midge. And so before closing, I'd like to just talk for a minute about how I would fish these two in combination. The buzz ball, because it represents a cluster of midges on the surface, is going to be your lead fly. And then the, print, or the uh, zebra midge um, coming off of the bend of the hook, in a case that I'm going to demonstrate here, is that here's my buzz ball, which I've tied on to the leader that, of course, would be uh, tied on to my fly line. Off the bend of the hook, I have tied 
the zebra midge. In this particular case, I have about a foot of line in between or foot of leader in between. And so you might want, depending upon the depth of the water where you're fishing, to fish the zebra midge a little bit deeper. Um, there will be cases where you're going to have to make that change in order to accommodate the depth of the stream. But in any case, um, you would want that zebra midge to be trailing your lead fly, whether it's a buzz ball or whether it's some other type of a floating fly. And I most always fish with two, fi two fly combination unless I know that the fish are feeding exclusively on the surface. And then I'll pretty much stick with one or two dry flies or dry fly and a short wet fly dropper. So uh, I hope that this will give you a bit, little bit better idea of how to fish these flies, how to tie these flies. And I sure hope that you have a wonderful day on the stream. Thank you. Thank you.